Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic? Let's do it. What is the scariest or creepiest thing that you've ever seen but no one believes you? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. There's a spot in San Diego where a ton of sea lions give birth in a cove that people can stand above and take pictures and watch. It's relatively well protected, thanks to a ton of rocks at the shore, but there's also a massive drop-off that reconnects to the larger ocean. When I was just out of high school, I was there with my ex and just having a normal, regular time. Out of complete nowhere comes this massive great white that just devours the sea lion from the drop-off and disappears back into the depths. I'll never forget just the pure frozen terror I felt that this killing machine was that close to me and no one ever saw it. In Phoenix, Arizona, three times I've seen a jackrabbit the size of a border collie. Wife and kids were there too. I thought it was a mountain goat from about a hundred feet, then it effing hopped away casually. I just… how? Three times? Went night swimming in the Ottawa River with friends. A massive fish touched me, and I saw a large fin. It looked like it was the size of me. No one else saw it, or seems to really believe me. I was coming home and walking into our garage late one night when I noticed a woman sitting in the passenger seat of my mom's car. That freaked me out at first. I walked up to the passenger side and the window was down. I asked her what she was doing in our car. She said waiting on her husband in a foreign accent. I then went inside the house and went to my mom's room, woke her up and told her about the lady. She came with me to the garage but the woman was not there anymore. I walked over to the car and said, look the window is down. My mom said, one of my sisters must have left it open. She said, please roll it up and let's go to bed. I said, you don't believe me, do you? I said, there was some Spanish woman in the car and she was waiting for her husband. She said, no, but it was strange because a Cuban couple lived in the house before us and the husband had passed away. Edit wording. One night, very late and in the middle of winter in Southeast Alaska, I had to go outside to my car to grab my phone charger. It was so quiet outside. Everything was very still and motionless. I remember I wanted to take in how quiet everything was, so I just stood outside my house and embraced the silence. Then out of nowhere, a massive wind blew through the forest across the street in one particular spot. Then I heard a deep growl, like some sort of animal was ready to attack. I was so freaked out that I ran back into the house and did not charge my phone that night, lol. Part of me thinks that something or some sort of spirit was angrily moving around outside and I just happened to witness it. When I was 15, my mom passed away after a long battle with cancer. That night I woke up to a figure sitting at the end of my bed. I couldn't make out any features, but by the silhouette, I could see it was human in nature. I kept trying to talk, but couldn't really form words. I remember wanting to sit up, but I couldn't. It was like being frozen in place and I felt too sleepy to keep my eyes open. As someone who was and is scared of the dark, I should have been terrified, but for whatever reason I felt safe and okay. I would have dismissed this all as a dream, except the next morning over breakfast, my sister, who was 10 and had been stoic as F throughout my mom's illness, nonchalant me, told me that mom had visited her last night. She basically described the same scenario I had experienced. Years later, other family members told me similar stories about being visited the night my mom died. My dad never believed, though. I was 17 and in the hospital, in heart failure, waiting for a heart transplant in the pediatric cardiac ICU. I was admittedly pretty drugged and having a hard time. One day, my parents left my room to go have lunch, and they turned the lights in my room off so I could rest. A few minutes after they walked out, I heard a noise, like someone shuffling along the ground. I sat up, and by the foot of my bed, there was an old man crouching and smiling, a horrible, manic smile at me. He started to laugh very cruelly, and he grabbed my bed rails and started to shake the bed. I started screaming, and a nurse ran in to check on me and turn the light on. The second the light came on, the man disappeared. I told my parents about what had happened when they came back to my room, and they convinced me I was just hallucinating from all the medication I was on, and from the lack of blood I was getting to my brain. I believe them. Later, I was having a conversation with the child life specialist for the ward, and I told her that earlier that day I hallucinated a man who shook my bed. She went white and asked me if he was really old and thin and if he had been laughing. I told her he had. 
and she said that several of her children that had previously occupied my room had described that same man to her. To this day, I get freaked out thinking about what I saw. I wonder if the man was just a common hallucination that a bunch of deathly ill children experienced, or if he was really there. A non-supernatural paranormal one. I was about 10. My parents and I were camping in Montana in the winter, not my idea. We weren't too far from a small town and decided to walk into town for dinner. There was a decent enough path even with the snow. I was walking about 20 feet behind my parents just messing around like any kid. We had heard wolf howls the night before and in early morning. As we were walking along, we heard some closer howls. My parents kept walking while I slowed down a bit to listen. The howls stopped suddenly, and that's when I heard something. I turned and looked at the bushes. There was a full-grown wolf not five feet from me crouched in full hunting mode. I did the dumbest thing and took off toward my parents. I caught up to them, and they kept me between them and the rest of the walk. They didn't really believe me, and neither did most of the people at the restaurant, except for an elderly hunter. He said the same thing had happened to him before. When I was about 13, I was laying on my bed, and something punched twice from underneath, like solid punches I could feel through the mattress, loud thuds, almost lifting it. My dad was downstairs watching TV. First stop was to look under the bed for my brother. There was no one under there, and there wasn't enough clearance to swing a proper punch anyway. Still don't know what happened to this day. My grandpa died suddenly a few years ago. I'm not spiritual, but my grandmother is Anglican. I woke up one morning, having had a dream where I was at a party at my grandparents' house, and my grandfather was there. He hugged me, told me he loved us, and said, I can't tell her myself, but tell Gran I love her, and I'm here with her. I woke up and thought, wow, weird dream. I'll have to tell Gran about it when I get home from school. So I go to school and rush over to see my gran as soon as I get back, and I walk into her living room and she's crying on the couch. Very usual for her to cry like this. I ask what's wrong and she starts telling me about what a horrible day she's had, and she finishes it all off by saying, and the worst thing is, I haven't seen your grandfather in my dreams yet. Why won't he visit me? It really was a jaw drop moment for me. My dream, which came before her terrible day, was the answer she needed. To this day, I don't know how it could be possible, unless my grandfather really did know about that day and really did visit me. I've always been atheist, like my grandfather, but since that day, I've begun to believe that at least in some way our loved ones aren't gone after death. Spiritual, Anglican, believer, non-believer, I mean, it comes down to how you feel about, I guess, coincidence, whether you believe it or don't believe it or maybe think it's possible, which is kind of faith uh, in a nutshell. So, regardless if you do or do not, or maybe do now, you were there for your grandma in a time of need, which is pretty great, so thanks, Grandpa. S.O. and I saw an unidentified flying object. It was hovering over a lake we were sitting at. It was pretty close to us, and then made no sound. It was rectangle. It was night, so I thought I'm hallucinating. Just to be sure, I asked S.O. if he sees that thing over there, and he just said, Wait, you see it too? Both of us thought we were hallucinating. Many years ago, I did recovery for a funeral home and was sent to retrieve the remains of an elderly woman from a hospital morgue. As I loaded the gurney into the hearse, I heard the voice of child say, Tell them mommy wants to wear her blue dress. I spun around and saw a young girl about 12 years old in a parochial school uniform smiling. Then she waved by and disappeared. I told the funeral director, who laughed, but days later he told me that when a relative brought in a blue dress for the service, they told him that the woman had lost a daughter at a young age when struck by an auto walking home from Catholic school. I lived on the fifth floor of a very old apartment building while attending school. It was a small apartment, three rooms with a single entrance. I was laying in bed reading a textbook when I looked up because of some movement. It was a tall, slim, middle-aged man dressed in 1800s clothes. He walked diagonally through the room, lifting the edge of his hat in greeting and disappeared as he walked through the closet door. I had heard about weird things happening in this building and mentioned this to a neighbor who just stared at me. When I was in college, I would go to Joshua Tree National Park to rock climb over spring break. Around dusk one night, my buddy and I were hanging around camp. A huge lizard walked onto a rock about 20 feet away. The lizard's body was at least three feet long without a tail and probably about a foot thick. We watched it for a good 10 seconds before it scurried away. I've been to JT dozens of times, but I've never seen anything like that since. 
I used to work a retail job at an old church building that was said to be haunted. Doors would slam, lights would flicker, things would move, etc. One day I was organizing crap down in the basement with a co-worker when she started to freak out. I turned around and behind some boxes she found a hole in the drywall that exposed a cavity in the stonework behind it. In the hole was a small ornate wooden box. It was an empty coffin designed for an infant. I told my boss about this and the box was promptly sold later that day to some unknown buyer for a whopping seven dollars. All the weird paranormal stuff ceased shortly after. When I was 12 years old, me and my buddy from the same building used to ride bikes together. We used to store the bikes in the basement, which was very creepy and dark. We always went together to retrieve the bikes. One morning I was behind her with the keys and she asked me to give them to her. I saw a hand waving at us through the frosted glass. I showed it to her and she saw the same thing. We didn't utter a word at the same time, started to run upstairs screaming. Their apartment was on the ground floor. We were screaming at her parents and described the same thing pretty much at the same time. Her father went downstairs immediately and opened the basement door and looked around. The basement was very small. There was no other escape route from there. No one was there, and no one believed us. We never stored our bikes there ever again. When I was seven, my four-year-old sister went missing from our home during the night. I looked for her everywhere, and then went to bed. Didn't tell my parents. Went to bed. In the AM, she reappeared at breakfast, and when I asked her where she was, she said she went to play with her friend. Fast forward a few weeks. I hear giggling outside our bathroom window at night. Again, my sister's nowhere to be found. Following the giggles, I lifted myself up to see out the window, just as what I can only describe now, a filthy, black-eyed child staring back at me growling, also lifted itself up. This being smelled like hot garbage, by the way. To this day, my sister denies any of this and says I must have been dreaming. About 15 to 18 years ago, when my grandpa passed away, my grandma stayed in my parents' house for a week or so. Our apartment was small, and we had a 5 meter long corridor that connected three rooms, one from each end and one on the side with a doorway, but no door. I stayed at the side room, my grandma on one end, my parents on the other end. Every single night that my grandma stayed with us in the apartment, at around 12, 1 o'clock, I could hear heavy steps that made the floor creak. The sound was like someone stepping on sand wearing boots. I could hear the steps behind the wall, and every time the steps would get close to the doorway, it was dark, but I could still see. So when the steps reached the doorway, I would see no one, but still could hear the steps moving further towards the room where my grandma was sleeping. I was a little kid at the time, so the situation would make me shit my pants. I was too scared to move or to make a sound. And the next day, I didn't tell my parents. God knows why. But after a week, when my grandma left, I stopped hearing those steps. And when I told my mom, she jokingly said that it was my grandpa looking for our grandma. A ghost lady standing where my bedside table should be. I had been asleep and reached to the table to get the water bottle when I felt a hand touch my arm. I jerked back and saw the lady holding out her hand to shush me like a child. She was whispering to a man standing beside her. There was a lamp on across the room, so I saw them very clearly. I shot out of the bed and hit all the lights and they vanished. Didn't see it, but heard it. My friends and I got a cheap set of walkie-talkies from Walmart and were playing around with them in the middle of the day. There's a bit of silence as we're trying to figure out the volume and out of nowhere there's a male voice saying, Mayday, 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 that comes through all of our walkie-talkies. And it definitely sounds like it's from one of those aircraft headsets. We try to answer back, but there's no response. I call non-emergency, but they say there weren't any reports of distressed aircraft or shifts, or even if there were, they couldn't do anything about it. Alternatively, a couple months later, I saw a plane with an engine on fire go over my campus, but apparently no one else did. I love vintage items and naturally shop in antique stores often. A few months ago, I was in an antique store near my house and noticed a humble but beautiful dresser with a tag that read, Made in 1800. I opened the top drawer to inspect it and got this very strong, sudden vision. I don't really know what to call it. Suddenly, I was seeing things through the eyes of a woman in the top floor of an old farmhouse standing in front of the dresser opening the drawer. I can tell you what the room looked like around me, what she, I, was wearing, and I got a sense that she was shorter than me. I'm 5'7", so slightly above average height for women in the US. I immediately burst into tears. It was overwhelming. 
I've never had anything like that happen to me before. A couple years ago, I was driving down a local FM road in Texas, basically the smaller, usually two-lane highways that connect city to city down here. Well, this particular stretch is outside of town, and it's a sunny Sunday afternoon, and I'm by myself. I come to a stoppage in the road, where another relatively major road has a T-shaped intersection. I come to a yield to turn from the top of the T right onto the bottom road. As I'm coming back up to speed, with no cars in sight, and a 15-year-old six-cylinder Taurus, so not exactly zipping it, a giant black mass suddenly drops onto my windshield, thankfully in the center, where I can still see to the left of it. After I stop screaming at the top of my lungs, I realize as it begins to flutter its wings away that a full-sized turkey vulture, trust me, the name fits, they are huge birds of prey, had just swooped down onto the front of my car, perhaps mistaking a leaf or something on my hood for a rat or something, it then flies quickly away after realizing its error. It took me about an hour to fully calm down from that, and my parents never believed me when I got home. One person believes me. Some of the ones that matter to me do too, but mm, here goes. I will start off with, I'm not a religious person, but I'm not an atheist. I suppose spiritual is the term used in these situations. My grandmother, who essentially raised me for the first five years of my life because both of my parents were working two jobs to try and make it, was born and raised in El Salvador. She had my mom, my aunts and uncles, and even took in some orphans who had fled the terrorist or had become orphans because their parents were killed due to the civil war, and I grew up calling them aunts and uncles just because she raised them. She was an effing badass. She saved my mom from being sold into human trafficking by walking for three days and finding where my grandfather, whom I never met, and am glad I didn't, was hiding my mom before he had sold her and took her home. Then. When she realized that her kids were going to get killed one way or another staying in her home country, she got the 18 of them, including herself, to go to the US. 14 of them made it across. My mom was the second oldest. She was 19. The rest were 15 and younger. When she died, it hit me harder than anything. When I was a kid, I would take advantage of the fact that she didn't speak English. So she would try to tell my mom the things I said and I would say, she doesn't know English mom. Of course I didn't say that because she's confused. I mean, I was a little effing prick. Then, when I was in high school, she got moved to a retirement facility. She was being abused, etc., and I couldn't just go visit her. I have a horrible hatred or fear of medical facilities, and I didn't want to see her at one of those places, even though my mom said she kept asking for me. Anyhow, she got put on hospice, and she was at one of my aunt's houses. She broke down when she finally saw me, and I broke down and started apologizing for all of the times I wronged her that I didn't see her. And this frail woman just smiled and said, you were my first grandson. All of those times that you said and did those things do not matter because it never made me feel any less for you. You're my heart and I will always be part of you and you of me. Of course, all in Spanish and it eased the pain a little. She died 48 hours later. I was the only grandchild that had yet to visit her before them and I was the last. The day of her funeral, I kept breaking down and crying and hurting. So now I will get to the part that many don't believe. I've always been an avid and lucid dreamer. I've had dreams that I can recall even now that happened years ago that literally felt like hours and sometimes even days. But they were always out of this world crazy, yet so realistic in the way they felt and every time I told people about my dreams they would say, you're making all this shit up, you probably watched it in a movie, etc. But the dream I had that night after her funeral was the most visceral and real experience I ever had and will swear by it until I die. It started off with I was walking through a very beautiful park. I was walking barefoot through the greenest grass I'd ever felt. The blades tickled but there wasn't a grainy feel of dirt, mulch or pebbles to be found. The sun was shining, its warmth caressing my skin, oak trees, redwood trees, pine trees and cypress trees all in the same place. I could smell the aroma of each individual tree even knowing that not all of them typically exist in the same forest. There were people playing with dogs, talking, laughing, birds chirping, deer, cows, buffalo, and bison grazing through the grass without a care for the others. I continued walking, admiring the sights, and I passed a bench with a person sitting on it, not even taking a glance, simply seeing the figure out of my peripheral vision. And the figure, in a sarcastic manner, said, are you really just going to ignore me? Damn. I knew the voice, but it was foreign because it was in English. 
but the soft tone made my heart stop. I doubled back and it was my grandmother, only she was 20 years younger, young enough for me not to have seen her that young, but with gestures I recognized. I cried and screamed and hugged her and she just said, sit down, mijo. We talked for hours on end. She told me things not even my mom knew about and that this was the best way she knew how to show me heaven and that all of her plans were gone and pains. Anyhow, I woke up from the dream, tears in my eyes, but a warm hand touched my shoulder and heard a whisper right by my ear. Te amo, mijo. Yo estoy bien. I told my mother about this the first thing in the morning, and she about collapsed at the floor and cried. And she said, mijo, she talked to me last night too. She said she had just gotten done talking to you. As I said, I'm not religious, but I am spiritual, and nothing in this world had me believing in an afterlife until that experience. I'm extremely open-minded yet skeptical of most things. This is the one that no one will ever be able to change my mind on.